Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to drown out the sounds of my son and his addiction to Bruno Mars. So if you hear it in the background, my apologies. This reading extends from Facebook. So welcome to Fill the Ship with Amina. But if you just happened upon this read, I guess you can pick one, two, three, or four. Now I think on Facebook, how many did I have? Well, how many do I plan to have? Because I'm actually doing this first and then I'm going to post on Facebook. So, I'm getting five. So you can pick a number from one to five. I'm going to show you five cards on Facebook. You should have chosen your card. If you have, then you were taken directly to the part of the reading that is meant for your card. But if not, if you're just here from YouTube, what's up, how you doing, subscribe. That was the whole point of this little Facebook to YouTube connect thing was to get people from Facebook to come to my YouTube and to subscribe because I'm going to be doing most of my um, free reads here now. Okay, so let me see what's going to be my five cards. I'll show them to you. And I'm not taking reversals, I don't think. So card number one, three of swords. Card number two, and I'm using my Orisha deck, by the way, Tarot, King of Pentacles. Card number three, Knight of Cups. Card number four. What is card number four? Oh, Eight of Cups. And card number five, Two of Cups. Okay. So, if you're not here from Facebook, choose your card now, and you can either listen to all of them, because something may resonate with you from all of the piles, or you can just go fast forward to your selected pile. The links should be in the description if I didn't get lazy. Okay, give me a sec. Okay, so if you chose card number one, or the three of swords, this is your reading. Let me get the book. I like to use the book on this deck. Voila! Yes, I see it in work. <laughs> okay. Three of Swords. In this card, we find some of the deepest suffering we may encounter in life. It is personal, deep, and lasting. Often in a reading, this card points back to something in the past that has left a permanent wound. Ochosi is known to be an expert hunter, able to find and catch or kill animals that others could not. One day, Olofin, an aspect of the creator, asked him to catch a specific bird for him, which he did. When he brought it home, his mother found it and prepared it for dinner, not knowing why the bird was there. When he came back, he was outraged that the bird was gone and could not figure out who had stolen it. He set out to catch another and brought it to a loafin right away. When asked what he wanted in return, Ochosi said he wanted his arrow to strike dead the person who had taken the first bird. A loafin granted his wish. So Ochosi fired the arrow high in the air and straight into his mother's heart, killing her. Wow, that's deep. When he found out the consequences of his search for justice, he pleaded with Olofin to bring her back. A lot of times with the Three of Swords in, in um, traditional tarot, it also has to do with heartache. Either you have just had your heart broken by somebody or you're dwelling in the past of a heartbreak that has already happened or it's coming 
and you need to brace yourself now. Or somebody feels like you broke their heart and they're thinking about you. All right. Symbolism of this card is an outlined forest obscuring Ochozi's view. So you can't see who you're aiming your arrow at. A beaded bag containing magic and charms. He has that on his hip. The dead body of Yemaya pierced through the heart, his mother. I guess they're giving a breakdown of what's on the card. Okay. Olofin agreed to bring back Yemaya, but we humans aren't so lucky. Many of our mistakes become regrets we carry forever. Worse still, some problems and heartbreak are so hard to resolve that we may even stop living life. Regardless of the scale at which this card speaks, Acceptance and letting go are the only solutions. No resolution or repairs are possible. An old wound preventing happiness or success. A rash decision with lasting consequences or the letter or the law will be carried out. So this is like karma or justice in a mixed blessing sort of way, you know. Taught a lesson to a Chosi that sometimes getting revenge isn't always worth it. Sometimes it's like this person hurt me or they did this to me. You got another bird, keep it moving. But instead, you still seek to get back at this person. So I feel like you can actually move on or the person that's harping on you can actually move on. But you're choosing to look back. They're choosing to look back and dwell and it's divine will. A lesson had to be learned for whatever happened between you and this person. So the solution to this issue is to make sure you're right before acting. That really just means make sure you really think things out, okay? Be just and meditate. So there's a need for you to really make sure you are in the right. And to meditate, go within before you react. All right, this is a card of vengeance in this deck. So be very careful of being vengeful or spiteful. Okay, it might bite you in the ass. And I'm gonna pull three cards from my higher self deck. Let's see what um, guides wanna come through or messages. We got third eye chakra. So either your third eye chakra is gonna be really feeling open now or you need to send some energy to your third eye but i'm getting a feeling of it being very open right now don't stop keep going so whatever you're about to give up on or something you feel like it ain't gonna come into fruition or it's taking too long don't don't stop and lastly yeah don't stop because awards are coming you may get grants you may get someone that wants to invest in you you may get a major opportunity something is coming your way my power number, my card number ones so with that if we are about to part ways i say peace blessings and all that good stuff that comes from being a part of my tribe thank you for going through all the noise of my children during your reading um my power number ones i really appreciate it um you dealing with it <laughs> Um, but yeah, just be patient. All that's been done to you um, will be righted unless you take on a vengeful energy. And if you don't just let the past, just let the past go. God got this is what I'm getting. Okay. Anyone who has done you wrong, they will pay the price, but on a just sense. Like see the vengeance that was sent out did not balance out. It was not equal to the deed that was done. So, take what resonates. I wish you luck. Please subscribe and like the channel. I love you guys. Bye. Hey, pal number two, or card number two, I'm sorry, or those that chose the King of Pentacles. This is your reading. Get the book. I hope I got this in the right order because I mixed up the cards for a hot second and I was like, oh shoot, is this the next one? <laughs> I hope so. If not, it just means that this is the order it was meant to be in. So if you chose card number two, then this is the card you were supposed to get. Everything is according to the divine plan. Okay. Court cards. 
Oh, cause I was like, I don't see the thing. Alright, alright. I'm sorry it's taking me so long. Cause I thought it was further up than it was in the book. Alright, so we have... The King of Pentacles is the master of their craft. They have spent years studying and practicing to develop an expertise that others cannot match. The person in this card has a tremendous connection to nature, which they understand intimately. Perhaps the most important and misunderstood element of the Orisha traditions is its reliance on the plant world. All initiations require specific plants based on centuries of practice and knowledge. The Osainista, or priest of the master of plants, Osain, comprise a priesthood of their own. Devoted to learning all the magical, medical, and ritual use of plants, they are, they are integral to making ceremonies happen. Obatala was looking to expand his farm by clearing a wooded lot to plant yams. Hearing there was work, Osain offered his help. Obatala said, Clear all the useless plants so I may grow my crop, and left him to work. When he returned the next day, he found Osain napping, and no trees had been cut or plants had been pulled up. Confronting him angrily, Obatala exclaimed, You have done nothing. All these useless plants are still here. Osain then pointed at plants and explained their uses. This one helps with fertility. That one gets rid of witchcraft. This one here gets rid of headaches. They all have uses. Afterward, Osain agreed to teach Obatala all the secrets of the forest. So I do get that you're very connected to nature. My card number twos, it is very healing for you. Use herbs to heal big time. Um, yeah, connect to Mama Earth. I feel new ideas coming, like fertile. Like you feel fertile and you're creating new ideas or thinking of new things. The person this card appears for has a profound applied knowledge. It may seem simple, but it is built on decades of study and practice. So you have done your work to get to where you are. You have done your studying. You have done your research. They are usually gregarious and friendly. Plant, nurture, harvest, then plant again. Theory is nothing without application. And your work will take seasons to come to fruition, not days or weeks. So you can't rush your process. And you have put in seasons. So what I'm getting is now you're going to start to see the fruits of your labor. You've been impatient in the past. Now the universe has noticed you are surrendering. You are more patient. And so they're going to work. And things will start to come into fruition. The solutions to your problems. Grow a plant. Take an herbal bath. Spend time in nature. I already said that. And study under an expert. So maybe get into a workshop, join some kind of course, something that helps you increase your knowledge. Let's see what else we got from my higher self deck who wants to come through and add. Wow, the first card got this. The third eye chakra. So I'm starting to feel like my tribe, our third eyes are really, really, really keen right now. They're really, really open. So this is like a sign, do not ignore your gut. Do not ignore what you feel, okay? Awards are coming. First card got this too. So there's some kind of grants or some kind of recognition. I feel for you though, it's coming from the universe. Like they've been watching you. They see that you've been doing your thing. And so some blessings are coming your way. It's gonna seem like rewards from the most high. Like they get miracles or something. And the solar plexus chakra. So your solar plexus is doing its thing right now. We'll focus some energy there. Um, I've been wearing my solar plexus stuff. So maybe this is my pal. Um, I'm sorry, no. My sacral chakra. This is solar plexus. This is your confidence, your determination, your willpower, your ambition. That's that yellow energy right here. And I'm hungry. I hear my stomach growling beneath your ribs and above the navel. That's my message just for you, card number two. I hope it resonated. If this is where we part ways, please remember to subscribe to the channel and know that I love you. I seriously do just for being here um, and giving me your time today and allowing 
your spirit guides to come vibe with me. Um, subscribe, like, share. Peace, blessings, and all that good stuff that comes from being a part of my tribe. Okay, if you chose card number three. Look at you cooking it up. What you doing? What you making? What you creating? What are you working on? My Knight of Cups. Okay. So I'm going to go to the book, as I did for everyone. Oops, I went right past them. Hopefully my children behave during this session. Um, card one. I'm, I'm still so sorry for them. They were very loud through the whole time. Um, they need to meditate or ground to something. I don't know why the kids got riled up during that card. All right, card number three. The Knight of Cups is hardworking, often doing repetitive jobs. At its best, this card represents someone who is generous and tireless in service of their community. At its worst, it can speak of someone who is petty, irritable, and who complains endlessly about the job at hand. The, Orish the Orisha traditions run on food. When I was first initiated, one of my elders explained to me that a priest was obliged to be a good host and feed the people who came to their house. In this card, we meet the head of the kitchen, the person who knows all the traditional foods and how to prepare them. This person also knows how to run a kitchen for large events. Running a kitchen full of volunteers and cooking for lots of people is a taxing thing to do. Each animal that was sacrificed must have its parts prepared for the spirits and the rest cooked for the people present. All must be carefully kept separate to avoid a taboo item ending up on the wrong plate. It is not uncommon for people to cook and clean all day for several days in a row at a priest's initiation. Tippers can run high and emotions can overflow. The head cook's job is to keep everyone working together and on track. This card shows us how we do under pressure. When the work is tiring and thankless, our flaws and triggers, along with our character, all show. This person's life is like the kitchen. They work and sweat all the time, only to have it happen again the next week. A time of great effort without obvious end. Repetitive, thankless jobs that don't get us anywhere. And people who argue when the pressure is on. Take what resonates, okay? Solutions. Take a break. Hydrate. Do not speak in anger or host a dinner that ends with sweet food. So my suggestion is that you need to take a break, my Knight of Cups. You've been running. What I'm getting is that you're running. You're like, you're like, uh, I don't want to say holistic, but like a healing superhero, a nurturing superhero. You're running to the rescue of everyone. You're trying to spread yourself everywhere and just spreading your love a little too thin and not enough for you. And um, before you start to resent your position, because you are a leader, you are very knowledgeable, you're very wise, everyone comes to you, before you start to resent it, take a break. That's what I'm getting for you. All right, let's see what else comes from my higher consciousness, your higher self. My stomach keeps growling. Hopefully it doesn't pick up on the mic. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what that means for y'all. I know for me it means I'm hungry. I'm not even trying to read into it. I woke up this morning and I did not eat. I've been eating a bag of Doritos. <laughs> ah, somebody out there is hungry. Maybe for some, some abundance. All right, let's see what we got. Get a whole new wardrobe. Revamp your look. You are going places fast. So opportunities are coming, my Knight of Cups. Take a break. Okay, rest, because when they come, you don't want to be burnt out. All right? Time to add a physical wellness ritual. I'm getting a lot of advice about self-care. When I move with spirit, everything is nothing at all. I will find a physical activity to do every week or every day. Okay? And last, don't stop, keep going. Pound number, card number one got this as well. You might be feeling... Like something you've been doing or putting your energy into or putting a lot of love into, you're not getting a balance back or something, but it's time for you to just switch up your look, switch up your vibration, do some physical healing on you, take a class or something that heals the physical, and um, 
don't stop. Don't give up. Okay? Whatever you're doing, don't give up. The world needs you, is what I just heard. Okay? So this is where we part ways. My pound, my card number threes. Um, I send you so much love. I ask that you subscribe and like this video as well as share it. Um, please help grow this, the channel. Oh, my stomach is acting up. Um, hopefully I make it through the next two cards because I don't want to stop. But anyway, peace, blessings, and all that good stuff that comes from being a part of my tribe. Hey, card number four. Well, if you chose the Eight of Cups. This is your reading. And my daughter's already over here to make noise. We've been having some luck with card number two and number three. Card number three, they started getting loud again. Oh, why am I mixing for you again? That was weird. You might need to get a reading, my um, those who chose number four. You might want to think about booking a one-on-one -on -one because for some reason, your ancestors uh, made me pick up the deck and start to shuffle like you were getting a, a personal reading. Okay, so there may be um, spirits eager to talk to you. All right. In this card, we work to find meaning among what has been lost. It is a card that can speak of stagnation, loss, depression, and a lack of direction. Here, the attention being turned inward must look to external forces to help one move forward. Spirits of the dead have many different categories in the Orisha tradition, the most common being Egon, who are spirits associated, oh, sorry, associated by blood ancestry or initiation to us and our I never saw this name before. I hope I say it correctly. Ara Onu, the citizens of heaven, who are chosen or assigned spirits. In dealing with ancestors, we find a mingling of many other practices coming into the Orisha traditions. The religions of our ancestors, mediumship, spiritism, and a variety of traditional ways of working with ancestors all get mingled in many people's practices. You might go to church to pray for your grandmother, see a spiritist to ask about your mom, and be told to do a ceremony for your father in a shell reading. If all of these are done as separate practices, everything is fine. However, when people start to try using spiritists or mediums to mark Orisha initiations or solutions, we get into muddy water where people often lose their way. We end up wandering from guide to guide like the Rider Waite Smith image of the Eight of Cups, looking for something but not knowing what it is or where to find it. So traditionally for me, before I keep reading, the Eight of Cups means you are leaving something you were emotionally invested in. You're Either you need to walk away from it and you're hesitant because you do have a little bit of passion there still for it or there's a little bit of fire there still or you've already decided it ain't worth it. It's bothering you emotionally. You put a lot into it. You don't understand why it didn't go anywhere. And so you're going to walk away. All right, what else the book says? When we see the Eight of Cups, we tend to ask what the person needs. If they are unable to tell us clearly, we should ask the Oracle first before answering the questions the client has. This is why I guess it went to shuffle again. Okay. Once we can establish a goal as a point of reference, we can help them navigate there. With this card, people need to find better boundaries with the spirit world, not give it everything. This person is losing faith, the one thing they need most. You may suffer from depression and stagnation, existential crisis where life feels meaningless, a time with no clear direction or end, and gurus should be treated skeptically now as people will seek to take advantage of you. Okay, so those were all warnings, take what resonates. Right now, you might be in a vulnerable state emotionally where people might take advantage of you. Um, so be careful with that. Uh, do know that there is an end to this energy. We're going to go to the higher self deck and get you some more cards anyway. Um, the solutions are do not envy. End your time of grief. Feed your ancestors and do a spiritual mass for the dead. So there's a need for you to connect with your ancestors if you want to heal. Um, they're there to comfort you and nurture you. you got some mamas and grandmamas and great-grandmamas and papas who all want to wrap their arms around you. Um, but whatever you're walking away from, it's I feel like it's good for you. I really do. I feel like at the end of the day, it could be a job. It could be a career. It could be a relationship. It could be family. It can be a place, a home. 
whatever it is you're leaving behind, it no longer makes sense in the journey you are taking forward. Okay? It's time for you to leave those roots behind. You've been stuck there for too long. Let's see what other messages we got for you, my card number fours. Okay. Time to take some action. Yeah, you've been sitting too long, sulking maybe, having regrets. Um, it's time for you to get moving. We got a few for you. I'm going to take them. This is a special one. So somebody you've been questioning. Hold on. All right, for a minute, because this card usually means that someone you've been questioning, whether or not they're the one for you, they're confirming that this person is a special one. I deserve the best and the best is coming to me now. Trusting is not easy, but I'm healing. My higher self tells me to keep this one around for a while. But right when I was going to read the card, I got like another message that this was meant for you. You are a special one. You deserve the best and the best is coming to you now. Okay, it may be hard to trust, but you are going through a healing process right now. Your higher self tells you to keep your positive energy around for a while, forever. Okay, stay positive. Oh my God, you are a fucking star. Excuse my language. Step into your power and claim it. You are somebody that is playing it small or not really doing what you're supposed to be doing out there. You're just sitting around sulking over something that didn't go right because it wasn't supposed to. Lastly, your purpose is to make dreams come true. And this is a red card. It's straight from your ancestors. They want you to know that you are being pushed to a higher purpose. And whatever's not working out, whatever you got to walk away from, it's for a reason. Okay? And that's what I have for you, my card number fours. Very straight to the point. I hope that resonated in some way. I hope it helped you. If this is where we part ways. Please remember to subscribe and like and share. Peace, blessings. Book of reading. And all that good stuff that comes from being a part of my tribe. Love you guys. Last but not least, if you chose card number five, the two of cups, I chose this card. <laughs> All right, in traditional tarot, the two of cups is like usually your divine mate or calling in your perfect partner, your perfect match, um, your twin. At least that's what I get from it. All right, somebody here needs a personal reading. I almost went to my deck again to shuffle, and I did that for power. For card number four too okay so when i do that and it's supposed to be a one card read it usually means somebody here needs a full-on personal reading so you could book that at steamholisticarts.com slash book dash a dash reading all righty in this card we find love oh wow a deep reciprocal emotional caretaking and enjoyment between the people involved it speaks of connections that are playful open honest and joyful here we see a devotee making an offering. They kneel to be closer to the offering as if to be closer to a lover. As they shake the rattle and pray, they ask honestly for what they need, and the Orisha draw closer to hear what their beloved needs. Practicing the Orisha traditions is often tremendously inconvenient. It requires elements that are uncommon in the diaspora, many of which might not be easy to get outside of West Africa or tropical climates. Part of the act of devotion is in the effort it takes to find the right fruit or prepare a specific meal or offering. In this card, the person has made a lamp out of a kind of specific squash. These days, the lamps have been largely replaced by candles, which are a European introduction. While the Orisha may choose to help anyone, like people, they often are swifter for those who show care and devotion for them. Here we find the power of reciprocal receipt that relationships. When approaching their reaches, many people often take a transactional approach, like they can buy what they want. Gifts from a loving person or a spirit, a lasting loving relationship, asking for what you need,
the rewards for past good deeds. And my kids got very loud during this reading. So I take that as confirmation that if you chose this card, you have met the one or you're with the one or the love is going to be renewed between you and someone that you are with. Um, I don't feel someone new coming in. I feel like this is somebody you're with. Uh, maybe it's a new love, but just know that the feelings are equal. Okay. And I see rewards coming in for past good deeds. So this relationship is like a blessing, a gift for you having been a good girl or boy. The universe is like, here you go. Okay. And you were clear about what you wanted and what you needed this time. The solution, make time to speak to the spirits often. Give thanks. Make things the traditional way. So do a lot of work traditionally, healing, protection wise, all of that. And ask spirit what they want. What does spirit want you to do or offer in service or in return? Okay, for the blessings. Let's see what your higher self what comes through, who wants to talk to you, what messages. This reading was nice. All right, all right. We have, this is not true love or a loyal friend. Watch your back, but keep doing you. So there's someone that either is coming off to you as if they're your true love or they're coming off to you as if they are a loyal friend and really they are not i'm getting jealousy issues i'm getting haterade being that you just got the two of cups talking about true love i'm getting the feeling this is a friend you need to look out for somebody that pretends to be um, a supporter but really does not want to see you go that far the sacral chakra yes this is my pal I just made a mistake in the last pile um, card and said uh, I was rocking the, sac the solar plexus, but sacral. That's why I've been wearing a lot of my orange stuff. Creative energy, creative freedom, sexual expression, sexual freedom. Just being free to express yourself on all levels. You're there. Be vulnerable and transparent. Okay? Continue to express yourself freely. I'm getting another card for you guys. Last one. Archangels. Call on your archangels. They're around you. They're helping you. They're working with you. They're making things move. And they want you to let the past go. Okay? Don't cling to the past. The past is going to mess up this love here. Okay? This two of cups. The past is going to get in the way of that. Count on your archangels. They're clearing the way. Stay your vulnerable and transparent self. But that still doesn't mean you know completely be a fool and let disloyal people in all right keep that sacral chakra glowing orange and i'm gonna wish you the best my card number fives if you enjoyed this reading please remember to subscribe like my channel share the video um look at some of the other videos they're timeless most of them peace blessings oh and join feel the shift if you ain't did that yet we start Sunday. Peace, blessings, and all that good stuff that comes from being a part of my tribe. I love y'all.